Hey guys, how's it going? Coder Man here. Uh, I had a pretty interesting weekend. We ended up getting a tour of uh, Factory 5 in Massachusetts. Uh, one of my buddies happens to own a couple of their cars and set up a behind the scenes tour of the factory and got to speak with some of the key members there about how they build the cars and stuff. Uh, so I shot some little clips and I'll, uh, I'll pop those in now. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed those little clips from Factory 5. It was really cool to talk with the people about the business and how the founder of it has kind of instilled that, you know, even if it costs a little bit more money, he'll bring somebody in-house to do a job. Maybe outsourcing, he'll save a couple bucks, but he really just prefers to have people in-house. Uh, he keeps the quality higher, keeps the control better, and at the end of the day, he gives a, um, you know, a local family a job. So I think that's really cool. I like companies that do that. So in addition to the Factory 5 tour, uh, I actually, the same friend that ended up giving, getting us the tour, Factory 5, happens to have a Maserati, and he's looking to get something different. But what's really interesting about this Maserati is it has essentially the same engine as the Ferrari F430. That kind of piqued my interest, and I've mentioned in the past that I wanted to take it for a ride. He's offered it a few times, just. You know, for whatever reason didn't work out. Uh, as with luck would have it, after lunch on Saturday, I ended up being able to take it out on the road for a quick little rip. And, you know, I gotta say, it's it's a really well-purposed car. Uh, it has a lot of power right where you want it. It has way more torque than the M3, which, I mean, as you know, if you've driven one or own one, they don't have a whole hell of a lot of torque just by design, which is kind of unfortunate. But with the Maserati, it just had a lot of that low end off the line as well as, you know, middle gears, second, third, you know, just power, which is awesome. Uh, I liked it because I've kind of set up that, you know, as you guys probably know, I want to get the 430. And I've made it a point that I have never test drove any Ferrari of any form. And the reason that is, is because I've had this dream and this goal to get this car and I don't want to, I don't want to like cheat myself. So I want to have the full entire experience of purchasing the car, driving the car home, you know, just doing that whole thing. So I've never even, believe it or not, I've never actually sat in a Ferrari, which would seem strange for a car enthusiast. I've driven uh, one of my other friends, Lamborghinis. I've sat in a couple of Huracans. Like I've, I've been around exotic cars, fortunately around, you know, similar business owners. And I've just never sat in a Ferrari of any form, which is kind of strange, but, you know, the idea of it was I was able to drive a car that's similar to it and kind of just reassured or reaffirmed my position that I want to get that car. So, you know, got to, got to do that, which leads me to today's topic. And that is with advertising and with working with a creative business, Everyone is so quick to go buy advertisement, you know, go buy video ads, text ads, whatever, but they're missing a great opportunity. And I can speak from this from experience over the last now 12 years, and that is referral-based advertising. And what I mean by that is you end up reaching out to your network and letting them know that you're providing a new service or you've continued to provide this service over, you know, last X years, and you actually end up getting so many referrals out of that because 
they've done work with you. They've seen your work ethic. They've seen the projects that you've completed. They've been a follower or a fan or whatever it happens to be. They find somebody that needs that type of work and you're the first person that comes to mind. As you continue to work, more and more people are recommending your service. And it's a really interesting thing because, you know, as you know, when you're making a purchase, a friend's referral or a business contact's referral or recommendation it holds a lot of weight. When you're recommended by somebody that that person trusts, it creates this bond where it's like, okay, you know what, uh, you know, such and such is recommending this guy for you know this app development or this web development or this you know creative service whatever it happens to be and they're recommending them so clearly they're they're essentially putting their name on their work they're saying this guy or this girl will take care of you and you know it's it's going to work out you end up having an opportunity to get all this other work but the problem with it is, or I should see the the, the, pe the problem people have with it is it, they always keep it one-sided. So in my case, where I do web design, I'll have contacts that will recommend us for web work. And oftentimes what people will do is they'll say, hey, thanks, you know, great, whatever. I appreciate that referral. But they never reciprocate, right? So they never even bother to figure out what the other person does for work or get them work or even get contacts so that maybe they can you know, get their own referral network going, or, you know, maybe you have a client that, you know, in my example, where I build websites for smaller businesses, you know, if they need a video need, or have a video need, rather, I have a friend that has a video company. So if they need video, I know for sure who I'm going to recommend. I've seen his work, we've worked together on some stuff together, and I can recommend him without question. And it kind of just goes back and forth like that, where you essentially just feed off of each other for work. And what's really funny about this is, believe it or not, I have not spent that much money on advertising for my software company. Like, very little. More or less just an experiment here or there. 99.9% .9 of the work that I get comes from referrals. Whether it's friends, contacts, colleagues, somebody I meet at a car show, whatever it happens to be, I always, you know, oftentimes the conversation starts off as, such and such referred me and I need to do X. You know, I take care of them, I continue on, go to the next person, you know, and then I have a relationship with that person that I just got as a new client. We continue to work together for, you know, many years, maybe one project, maybe a hundred projects, whatever it is. You just, if you focus on your network, you know, and I'm sure you've seen it online in those, you know, the memes that, you know, all the affirmation and motivation crap, but it says that your network is your net worth. I truly believe that. I think that a business's net worth, their true value comes into what their network is, who you associate with, who you do business with, and how well you take care of your customers. So there's my thoughts on why, uh, you know, I personally can say that referral-based networking and advertising is going to be huge, especially when you're starting out because you want to create that bond with those companies and those individuals that, you know, no matter what, they're going to recommend you, right? So position yourself so that even if you have a, you know, a friend that has a couple of web designers or a couple of mobile app developers, more often than not, you get recommended because you do the, the best work. You take care of his clients the best. They come back with a glowing review and more often than not, that new client of yours is now going to recommend you to their network. And it kind of just, you know, spirals out from there. And I've, you know, I mean, like I said, I've yet to find a downside. Um, I mean, I guess the only real downside I can think of is if you suck at what you do or you're not providing good value to the customers, then you're going to burn through your network and you're going to get a bad reputation. But I think that's regardless of what you're doing in business. If you're sucking at it, it's not going to last very long. So that's it for today's video. Um, like I said, just uh, you know, interesting weekend. Had, had a little bit of fun with cars, and uh, wanted to focus on a subject that I've, you know, I've seen a lot of people doing advertising and talking about advertising, and you know, oh, I'm just getting started. How much do I have to spend? Honestly, nothing. Zero dollars. Focus on the people that you know. So you'd be surprised who, you know, you've associated with over the years, you know, even if it's in high school or college or whatever, you probably have somebody that can recommend you for their work. So that's it for this video. If you like this content, please give me that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you in the next one.